Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about a traitor space marine that was redeemed. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions or questions, please comment down below. And if you enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the Gravewalker. Neric Traeger was a well-respected field commander of the Iron Warriors Traitor Legion during the Great Crusade. For 90 Terran years, the Primarch Percherabo relied upon Draeger as a superb strategist and a field leader capable of turning the tides of war through his fierce determination. For Draeger, his loyalty to his Primarch and the Legion was fueled by a fear of disappointing Percherabo. This Iron Warrior would much rather die at the hands of the enemy and fail his Legion. When the Legion turned against the Emperor at the behest of the Warmaster Horus, Draeger never questioned his Primarch's decision to betray the Imperium. During the drop site massacre of Isfan 5, Traeger orchestrated the murder of countless loyalists, both from other chapters and his own. In a cruel twist of fate, a Moritan space marine from the Ravenguard Legion managed to assault Draeger and defeat him in battle. The Ravenguard Astarte went so far as to incinerate the flesh of Draeger's body, leaving him a barely living husk. This terrible defeat cost him the fleeting favor of his Primarch Percherabo, who discarded the broken commander as you would a broken blade. However, this was not the end of his usefulness to his legion, for in the commander's fall, the Apollocron, an often ignored warrior society within the legion, saw an opportunity. They recovered and rebuilt Draeger's shattered body with augmentic implants, grafting a cortex control directly into his nervous system and inducting the veteran warrior into the ranks of their order, but more importantly, introducing the commander to its technological mysteries. Draeger, now known by his brethren as the Gravewalker, took to the field once again as a consul Pravian. Where once his charges had been Legionus Astarte of flesh and blood, they were now automatons of iron and ceramide, walking engines of death forged by the legal cybernetica and bonded in the service of the Iron Warriors. Shunned by his Primarch and brethren, he quickly came to favor the company of these unliving machines, who showed him more loyalty than those he called brothers. Despite being ignored and cast aside by the Legion, Draeger never lost faith in the Iron Warriors. His unwavering desire to claim victory in the name of his Primarch held strong, and when the traitors ordered him to fight alongside the Alpha Legion and seize control of the strategically important forge world of Mizoa, Draeger marched into battle at the head of his battle automatons. During this campaign, the Alpha Legion was led by Attilin Skor, and Draeger took command of the 114th Grand Battalion of the Iron Warriors. In what could be argued as the last battle of the campaign, the Iron Warriors were ready to spearhead a frontal assault on one of the Forge City's walls, a key defense bastion designated as Teratol 5, which protected the approach to the main Forge Spire. Despite Draeger's protests, the attack was launched according to Skor's plan, though the Iron Warrior only agreed to this as an assurance that Skor and the Alpha Legion would support the attack. With the characteristic violence of the Legion, the Iron Warriors struck the defense like a hammer blow, wave after wave of gunmetal gray armored legionnaires advancing into heavy fire, heedless to the losses the loyalists inflicted on them. Draeger's attack quickly drew in the defenders from other sectors of the wall, as even the mighty defenses were unable to stop the advance of the 114th Grand Battalion. However, with steady reinforcements, the loyalists stopped their retreat and slowly brought the Iron Warriors to a halt. Bogged down in the outer defenses, surrounded by the loyalist units and caught in a murderous crossfire, Draeger ordered his men to dig in and set up makeshift defenses within the captured positions they now occupied. Wherever the loyalists threatened to break through, Draeger sent in his cohorts of battle automatons. As the traitor casualties began to rise, Draeger sent a predetermined Vox signal, later retrieved and deciphered by the Mazoan Magi, to the Alpha Legion, calling them to launch the second assault. But the traitor Vox network remain eerily silent. Uncaring of the Iron Warrior's fate, Skor and his elite Legion Headhunter cohorts were already conducting their own assault on the Mazoan Forge, but the majority of the defenders and all of its Legionnaires drawn away to engage the Iron Warriors, and his own forces still relatively fresh, Skor and the Alpha Legion infiltrators only encountered depleted battle automaton maniples, which they quickly overwhelmed. Soon the infiltrators were nearing the main spindle spire of the Forge, where in the central chamber resided the Noran regent themselves. 
only the regent's own bodyguards now stood between Score and his main objective. Fortunately for the defenders, Mizoa's central hall also harbored a 50 Astarte strong honor guard of the Disciples of the Flame. These space marines awaited the return of their lord Cassian Dracos, who was still sealed within the Forge Fane's inner sanctum. Cassian Dracos, also referred to as the Fallen Master, was the first lord commander of the Salamander's Legion from the time it was founded on Terra during the Unification Wars until the discovery of its Primarch, Vulcan. It was at this moment that the Alpha Legion was at the doors of the inner vaults that they opened and Cassian Dracos emerged from his seclusion in the fabrication vaults, his ancient dreadnought chassis restored to its former glory by the arts of the Mizoan Forge Rites. Yet rather lend his strength against Skor and the Alpha Legion warriors ransacking the central spire of Mizoa, Dracos led his honor guard towards the Iron Warriors. As the dreadnought charged forth, those automatons he passed shook off whatever feedback-induced mania had befallen their cortex and gathered around the Iron Warrior, now slaves to Dracos' indomitable will. By the time Dracos reached the shell-scattered battlefields of Teratil V, it was at the head of nearly a thousand battle automatons. Yet rather than lending a decisive charge against the remaining Iron Warriors, now entrenched in a formidable makeshift fortress of broken rockcrete and iron, Dracos approached alone. Calling upon the enemy commander to show himself, heedless of any danger, Dracos passed through the ranks of the Iron Warriors' own battle automatons, the robots refusing to follow Draeger's orders to engage the Dreadnought. While Draeger stood tall upon the fortification his brothers had built, Dracos remained below. What words the two leaders exchanged remains largely unknown, but under Draeger's command, the Iron Warriors of the 114th Grand Battalion reloaded their bolters and followed the towering form of the ancient Salamander Dreadnought. Casey and Dragos gave Draeger and his Iron Warriors the revenge against the Alpha Legion they wanted, the Alpha Legion who just abandoned them to die, and with that, the Gravewalker tore down his unwavering loyalty to Percherabo and replaced it with a savage new purpose. Draeger was to become a close confidant of the Iron Dragon, rarely seen except in his presence, a silent and brooding warrior who would serve as Dracos' right hand throughout the wars of the Horus Heresy. And those were 40 facts on the Iron Warrior Draeger. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it gives you inspiration or concept ideas for taking a renegade and turning him into a loyalist. So if you want to create a special character for a uh, homebrew chapter and you want the War Master or you want a captain or something like that to be a renegade, uh, you have this option. Uh, obviously, he did not become a Chaos Space Marine, uh, even though he was fighting on the side of Horus and the Iron Warriors are a traitor legion, there was no corruption just yet. I think once you have the corruptive powers uh, within a battle brother turning him into a Chaos Space Marine, that's when it's, it's very difficult to say that he was redeemed. Um, so this is a renegade turn uh, loyalist. Like I said, I hope that helps. If you guys have suggestions for any other character or any other topic of Warhammer 40k, please let me know what it is in the comment section below. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you found this entertaining. Uh, this really helps me out with um, some ideas and concepts for a homebrew chapter crusade list that I'm building. Uh, we, I've, I've been creating some more hobby videos. I'm going to link it up above. Uh, basically, I am building uh, lore around a lot of the characters for my orc army. So if you're interested in that, uh, a link to that playlist will be up above. Um, but yeah, anything else, just comment down below. And I can't wait to talk to you guys in the comment section. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. <laughs>